All right, so here's a colorectal polyp. Back here is the muscularis propria, right? The external and the internal layer. Here's the mucosa. Here's the submucosa that's pulled into the polyp. There's clearly something going on here, and there's something going on on the surface. So let's take a look at the surface and then dive down and look at these two areas. All right, so let's look at the surface. And in fact, let's look at the surface where you actually see the junction of normal mucosa with abnormal mucosa. And just to reiterate for people who are fairly recent to pathology, perhaps the best way to make a diagnosis of a tubular adenoma is to compare the adenoma with what you think is normal. And notice that these cells are tall, they're dark, and they are hyperchromatic, while these cells are normal cells. Back here, these are completely normal colonic crypt cells, and this is not adenoma. So there's no question this is adenoma. Whether this is high-grade dysplasia or not really depends on who you are and who you believe and where your thresholds lie. Right, so then there's something interesting going on here, right? So there is clearly what looks like adenoma-like tissue that is getting into the submucosa. And how do I know that? What I'm looking for is the presence of large submucosal vessels. Large submucosal vessels such as these you will not see in the mucosa. So this is submucosa. When I look at the epithelium itself, it looks very much like the adenoma looked, right? Uh, there's no different from the adenoma. And perhaps, and I'm not absolutely sure, but it does look that the stroma is very much like that I see in the lamina propria, like here. So to summarize this, this area looks like adenomatous epithelium. This looks like lamina propria. So if we back out now, the other way, this stuff going down here into the submucosa is perhaps misplaced epithelium. But there's something else that's interesting that's going on. There are pools of mucin. Now remember, pools of mucin in and of themselves does not make this an invasive carcinoma. And the rule is, as long as you do not have neoplastic cells floating in it, you're okay. Because misplaced epithelium can generate a substantial amount of extracellular mucin. So this is not invasive carcinoma. This is not invasive carcinoma, but there's something even more interesting going on. Now, we have, in addition to pools of mucin, we have single cells, and much more than single cells, these look like signet ring cells, and I know they're signet ring, and I know they're malignant, because they look very hyperchromatic. Now, this takes this particular polyp out of the misplaced epithelium category. Perhaps this is misplaced epithelium, but this is invasive carcinoma. So this is a colonic polyp with possibly misplaced epithelium down here, or at least I'm convinced this is misplaced epithelium, pools of extra visated mucin, and a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. As you can see, this is a resection. It is appropriate to resect these because as if the tumor is poorly differentiated, the chances of having lymph node metastases are high. And in fact, this particular patient did have lymph node metastasis. Thanks for listening.